Okay. All right, everybody. Um, I'm in this uh, 18th, uh, excuse me, uh, 16th and 17th century sculpture gallery. Um, hope you can hear me. Um, I'm going to just get to take you around on a couple pieces um, that are right here. Um, we're going to go back down. We switch this over. We're going to see these uh, four prisoners. Um, they're massive bronzes. It's hard to tell how big they are, but we'll get up close. Um, it was Louis the Fourteenth can uh, commission them uh, for Versailles, um, and a lot of this, a lot of his plans. Um, actually didn't come to fruition uh, for whatever reason. Um, these, most of, the gal most of the sculptures in here were commissioned by him. Um, so let's just take a look around. We'll, we'll see what we get. All right, let me turn this around. Um, this is um, Saturn um, abducting, uh, I think it's Sybil. So there's Saturn, who's this angel. Um, this is Sybil's kind of uh, partner that's getting overpowered her symbol is um, a lion. Um, this was uh, a sculpture um, that Lebrun, um, who I actually didn't realize was doing sculptures, um, designed uh, for the four elements. So this is the element of Earth. Um, so Saturn, um, that, that, you know, the, I actually don't know the entire allegory, um, but you have this beautiful lion. Um, I thought we would um, perhaps take some screenshots. You know, as if I see a moment that I think is, you know, particularly powerful um, or a, more like a detail, I will um, take a screenshot and then maybe we can draw it. Um, this, the lions are like kind of all or nothing what I've been able to tell. Like this isn't the greatest lion sculpture, but the paws are incredible. So. There's uh, Saturn's foot. Kind of a dramatic scene. Um, the sculpture for air is all the way on the other side. These were only two of the four elements, um, air, water, um, and fire. So we'll go have a look at this one. I don't know who <laughs> is getting abducted over there. Um, all right, uh, these four sculptures were for the garden. Um, this fella represents uh, winter, old father winter. He looks a little grumpy pants. Um, he's got this little um, fire pit in his hand. Looks a lot like my fire pit, actually. The solo stove on the back porch. To do some classes from back there. Um, this is the goddess of the harvest. Um, she's adorned with florals on the top of her head. She looks a little bit more uh, uplifting, a little bit happier. Um, she, of course, has the wheat and this really dramatic sash. Um, none of them have legs, they're all on kind of pedestals. Um, they're supernatural beings, so there's the spirit of the uh, of the aspect of life. Um, I think this is spring and summer. Uh, let me look at the thing. Roman goddess of fruit and trees. She's a little more serious, but also not as grumpy as winter. Oh, that's really pretty. I'm not going too fast. I'm very excited. I um, I just got into the Louvre. I, I called you guys on Monday and I, they didn't let me in. And then the Louvre is closed on Tuesday. So Wednesday is the first day. And this is the first hour that I've been in. Man, the bouquet is really quite nice. All right, let me take a screenshot. All right, and then this guy, um, uh, he's the god of orchards. And he's a pretty handsome bloke. All right. Okay, so the next piece is super special. Um, we'll approach it from over here. So this is um, 
a sculpture that one of the pieces I came to see, um, it fits into art history in that it was a commission. This guy, um, I can't remember, I can't pronounce his last name, but he, um, he was Louis XIV's like, personal sculptor. And the myth is of an ancient hero who, you know, through kind of his arrogance, was like, I'm so strong, I can split this tree in half with my bare hands. And so he splits it and then his hand gets stuck in, um, in the wood. Let me put this back. And as his hand is stuck in the wood, he's trying to get out. And the lion sees him in this vulnerable position and takes him out. Um, it's a classical myth. And this particular angle, um, Cezanne came and kind of famously sketched in his sketchbook. And I'm not sure if he ever turned it into a painting. It may have become a watercolor. Um, but I know this piece through Cezanne and not necessarily through the sculpture itself. So this is a piece that I'm definitely going to be drawing um, while I'm here to kind of walk in the footsteps of those, you know, those great artists that came before me. The, um, look at that extreme vector here. So his hand isn't even tensed. He was tugging at his hand. So you can almost imagine that there was that same vector when he was pulling at his arm. Um, but now the lion has attacked. And so his legs are completely tense and his hand is still stuck. And he's trying to get out of this, out of this horrible situation. Oh my God. Oh my gosh. I haven't seen this angle either. Look at that lion's arm and the, you know, the paw. Incredibly human, actually. Digging into this dude's back. His name's Milo. Look at that dramatic, the dramatic legs and a twist and a torque in the lion's back. Oh my God. I've never seen this angle. I don't know why I didn't draw it from this angle. Good God. And that sweep, the tension of the, his left leg as well. Man, the moment of attack, it's crazy. This is a pretty sweet, sweet view. I'm gonna try and back up and zoom in maybe. Yeah, his face is um, not in extreme pain, but Total desperation. He can't get out. He knows he can't do it. <clears throat> um, here's one of the drawings. I'm surprised they didn't put the Cezanne on here, but this is the sketch that he made uh, for the scene. You guys can screenshot that if you want to get the information. Yes. Cool. All right. Yeah, we'll be back. We will be back. <laughs> this is also another one for Louis the Fourteenth. Loving it. Um, this guy is actually rescuing her from being uh, consumed by a sea monster. So this is a heroic scene of uh, Perseus saving Andromeda. Also Louis the 14th, this was for the garden. Um, all about heroes. There's this little chair. Mm. Oh my God. Oh my God, I didn't even see this. Oh God, look at her. We might have to draw that. <laughs> That's Medusa, bro. Oh, look at those snakes. Oh man, we gotta get out of here. That was scary. <clears throat> oh, these are another version of the similar. Oh yeah, let's let's follow up on this. This was supposed to have been another artist's interpretation of the those elements. Probably a common theme. This is grumpy pants winter. 
and then the flowers and the uplifting springtime the harvest oh these are fantastic i like these sculptures better who's the artist pierre levy levy uh, this period of sculpture i'm not particularly versed with so there's so many artists there's so much to dig into so many wonderful wonderful rabbit holes to go down that looks like a bacchus to me he's got the grapes and let's see who is that this guy's in french it looks like it says autumn but i guess maybe that's when you would harvest the grapes um, here's the allegory for air. There's this fellow blowing wind. Super dramatic. Angel wings. Oh, he's blowing. He's blowing the wind as well. Let's see if you can see that. This uh, sculpture looks like it's been weather damaged. Oh, interesting. We'll take a screenshot of that bad boy. Just so I could see how the, uh, I mean, they probably rescued the sculpture by coming inside. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, God. All right, let's go down and see. Um, a couple of these sculptures down here. And then I will probably make these little concise videos um, rather than staying on for 40 minutes. This was Hercules, beautiful Hercules um, sculpture, um, resting after doing performing his tasks. This pose of the torso is based on the Belvedere torso. So Torso de Belvedere was a um, an ancient sculpture that got dug up that was supposedly on the Parthenon. And all that was left is the torso and the pelvis. So no legs, no arms, no head. So these uh, artists would, um, you know, have their own take on what possibly the, the look of those arms and legs were. Um, that's what this guy is. I don't know who it was commissioned by. Um, you can almost see the exhaustion in the tr in the pelvis there, with his wrinkles in his lower back. I think it's all based on the torso. Incredible feet, though. I have some casts in the studio um, in Baltimore. We could have a foot study someday. All right, let's go over and see these prisoners. These are just like giant, giant sculptures. Look at that girl. They're huge, and all of the armor is designed for these larger-than-life figures. So they're all prisoners. Talk about grumpy pants. I love this guy's face. They're almost, they're not human in some way. Look at the ball of his nose. Um, very strange, very bulbous. Look at that thing. Um, you know, in various amounts of clothing with all of their hands are tied. And it was almost probably an excuse to make these, um, the weapons and, you know, the signs of their, um, you know, their shields, this axe. I mean, this, this it's just huge. Louis the 14th, this guy seems like he's in agony. That looks like it's. That looks like it's, like it's based off Laocoon. The Laocoon was also an ancient sculpture that they unearthed around the Renaissance, that man has been grappling with uh, ever since, and we will hopefully get to that um, someday. I don't know. The Louvre definitely has a copy of it. I don't know if they have the original. I think the original is in uh, the Vatican in Rome. Anyway, there's some bronze pieces, 16th, 17th century, um, really affluent 
kind of golden age in French uh, art, high French art. Um, again, we've got the uh, ancient Egyptian wing. We have the impressionist, uh, post-impressionist, 19th century romanticism. <laughs> this is just to uh, wet your whistle. Anyway, uh, I'll sign off for right now and have these emailed to you. Oh my God, I don't think we're gonna draw this guy's face, but I'm gonna take a picture anyway. All right. Ooh, is this Louis? This is Louis. Louis the Fourteenth. This is the guy. This is the guy that made this all happen. I mean, mad respect. All right, guys. I'm over and out. I will send this over to you. It was fun. I'm gonna try these. Uh, keep these live streams going. Thanks.